One of the tools or techniques, or you might think about it as a theme or trope that we use quite a lot in philosophy, is what we call thought experiments. And philosophy is not the only field that uses or produces or discusses these, but we, we do use them quite a lot. And some of the ones in philosophy have taken on a, a, a life of their own. And we will be using them in our class as sort of a launching point for doing and understanding this field of philosophy. Now, this term thought experiments is fairly recent. So if you read back into the history of philosophy, you're not actually going to see it used until really the 20th century. But there are a lot of thought experiments that you can find throughout the history of philosophy, not just in Western philosophy, but also in Eastern philosophy. Mencius' uh, famous you know, talk about seeing a child about to fall into a well, what do you do? Uh, and then talking about the four shoots or roots or sprouts of, of human morality, that's a thought experiment. Plato's Ring of Gyges, where you find a ring that will turn you invisible and allow you to indulge all of your desires and, and pleasures and drives without any sort of retribution or even detection. That's another thought experiment. We can also have thought experiments that bear upon things that are less concerned with, well, what would you do or what would other people do in these situations? Less about ethics and more about metaphysics or epistemology or the philosophy of human nature, all sorts of matters. And what makes them thought experiments is we're not actually experimenting with things in the outside world, you know, tinkering around with test tubes or anything like that. What we're doing is we're imagining, this is where the thought part comes in, what if certain things were different than they are? What if we arranged things in this way? What if we imagined a person who had or didn't have these qualities that we typically associate with a human person? What if we thought about two people connected together? Or uh, we could go on and on and on. Notice what the key thing is here. What if things were different? How would other things be different? Or would they still be the same? So thought experiments are ways in which we, using our imagination and our faculties of reasoning, and perhaps also other faculties like those that allow us to empathize or to feel compassion for other beings, we, we do a kind of experiment within our own heads. And we do it intersubjectively with each other. We say, well, what would you do? Let's all imagine this together. And so there's a lot of range for thought experiments. And you might say, well, okay, that's cool. That's what a thought experiment is. And I can see how there's a lot of these throughout the history of ideas and, and philosophy. I'm going to delve into them and take a look at some of them. Why do we use them? Well, we, we use them sometimes just for fun, right? There's a lot of thought experiments in which there's sort of an entertaining or otherwise uh, enjoyable aspect to them. Some of them are actually at the opposite. They place us in situations where like, ooh, I don't, I don't like this thought experiment. Uh, but we also use them to try to figure out where our gut or intuition or our sentiments lie, what we think about things, how we would respond in various situations. They require us to stretch our, our minds, you could say, to exercise our brains to think about situations that we're not in, but could possibly be in. For example, what if you were a brain in a vat and everything that you think you're experiencing is really just being supplied to you by you know, electronic impulses. Or, uh, take an earlier version of this, what if there, you had no arms, legs, body, there's no external world, but there was just an evil demon who was very powerful and was you know, making you perceive all these things, including a whole coherent world. That's coming from Rene Descartes in his Meditations on First Philosophy. So there's all sorts 
of ways in which we can use this to say, well, what about this? How would things, you know, be different? Let's think about this. Let's think through what the aspects that we're working with are. And we deepen our understanding sometimes with these. It's also useful, like I said, for figuring out where we, you know, where we normally think about these things, uh, how we think about these things, what, what philosophers often call intuitions. And they've become kind of a common currency. The last thing that I want to say is I mentioned that philosophy is not the only field that uses thought experiments, which means philosophy is not the only field that produces thought experiments. They're used in the sciences. They're used in history. When we say, well, what if this had gone differently? How would things have turned out here? They're used also in literature. And literature is particularly interesting because you can think of you know, a lot of scenarios that we, we run into as being thought experiments. So Ursula K. Le Guin's haunting story, though, The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas, perfect example of a thought experiment that comes out of literature but bears upon us in philosophical ways having to do with ethics. And so, you know, where does a thought experiment end and a whole big story begin, there's no easy dividing line, but we can say the thought experiments typically are fairly short, self-contained. They don't have an entire narrative universe to them. As a matter of fact, they're kind of restricted. And, and so actually the very last thing that I'll say about thought experiments is when you're tackling thought experiments, don't worry too much about extraneous stuff that isn't actually part of the thought experiment. So for example, in Plato's allegory of the cave, which could be thought of as, as a sort of you know, early thought experiment, <clears throat> people are in a cave, they only see you know, the wall on which there's shadows playing, people behind them are making a puppet show that shows up there, and then you know, they're liberated, they go up in the sun, they see real things, they come back down. Is that kind of like our world? That's more of an analogy, right? Uh, how do these people eat? Uh, Plato doesn't worry about that. You know, he doesn't cover that. You don't have to worry about that for the thought experiment. When it comes to the trolley problem, you know, you're, are you going to flip a switch? Well, what if instead you did something totally random, like, you know, you uh, ran out onto the tracks yourself? That's not in the framework of the experiment. What makes thought experiments work for us is that we do, in fact, stick with a kind of you know, limitation that's provided by the experiment itself. And within those limitations, there's a lot for us to think about.